Let's take a look at this process costing problem that deals with transferred in costs and weighted average methods. Now I'll read it to you. Arrogant Industrials manufactures an industrial solvent in two departments, blending and finishing. This exercise focuses on the finishing department. Direct materials are added at the end of the process and conversion costs are added evenly during the process. Aragon uses the weighted average method of process costing and we're provided with the information you see in Excel below for 2007. And then we have three requirements. So let's first tackle the first one where we'll calculate the equivalent units of transferred in costs, direct materials, and conversion costs. Okay, well I've staged a little bit of this ahead of time just to make uh, the demo go a little fast and uh, let's bring some of this to light here. Okay, we would label this flow of production and the first step we need to do is come up with the actual physical units and this really is step one of the process. Okay, so under step one we need to come up with the units and we have a couple of different categories we need to consider. We need to consider what were the units in work and process beginning and that was given in the problem as um, as 50, right? Right there, so we would enter that 50. I'll let me bring that to light here. Um, the next item we would need to consider is the transferred in during the period costs. Okay, and that one is also given as 90 so let's pull from let's pull from that cell where they gave us the 90 units okay really I'd like to write justify these but I think the way I've uh, good it will take it that way it'll look the same okay and then the next thing we need to do is come up with the total to account for so if we just underline this and uh, sum from above um, and I think I made everything a white color, so I probably need to bring all of that back. Okay, then we can come up with um, total units to account for of 140. Okay, we'll double underline that. Okay, then we need to go on to step two, where we calculate the equivalent units for the transferred in cost, the direct material, and the conversion cost. And... Uh, why don't I write right above this that this is step two? So we're all aware of that. Okay, and so then what we've got to do is work our schedule a little bit down below. So let me move a little bit so we've got a little bit of room. And we need to then come up with, let me indent this a little bit. We're now going to come up with what was completed and transferred out. Okay, and I'll move that back over. And um, it's not during June, this is during the current period. It was just simply copying from up there, which is the same number, but but I wanted to make that, uh, show that is, is separate. And let me add just one line in here so we can show that this is the next step. Okay, and if I paste, I think I can make that go away. Yep. All right, so that, well, and they've given us that. 100 units were completed and transferred out. Okay, well, in terms of equivalent units, if, if what was completed and transferred out um, during June was 100 units, then we need to count for that as the transferred in costs tr and, and the direct materials are all considered, all 100 units, are also considered in this period. Okay. And then also, if we completed and transferred in, then all of those units count as equivalent units for conversion units as well. Okay. Next, we need to consider what was left in work in process in ending inventory. Okay. And that was also provided above. They told, told us that uh, there was 40 units on hand. So again, if we copy this down here, we've got our total units uh, to account for. Okay, so I'm going to use the same label, 
and put that in there underline that but now we need to figure how many of those 40 units are equivalent units okay and here's how we would come up with this the transferred in cost all 40 of them would would account because um, and the idea here is what were the units that were justified where we actually did work during the period well, we're going to assume for transfer in cost all 40 units were applied. I think there's a statement about that in here. I think they say um, they provide some information about how it gets treated. There's the statement. Direct materials are added at the end of the process. So um, what we know is transferred in cost would all be accounted in work in process ending. In other words, all of those equivalent units are accounted for during the period that were transferred in. Direct materials get added at the end ending. So, um, since we haven't added any new direct materials because it's still in work in process, it hasn't, been en it hasn't ended, it hasn't been completed, then that number has to be zero. Okay, and for conversion cost, they tell us it uh, gets added in, isn't it, as we go? Let's read that. Conversion costs are added evenly during the process. So if we are 75% complete, and by the way, here's the degree of, of completion. They actually gave us those percentages. So we're 75% complete. It was 100% complete with respect to conversion costs, so all 40 units count. But with 75%, we've got to take those 40 units um, times 75% to come up with the equivalent units. Okay, then once we've done that, um, we can then do the summation. So I'll just copy this here and underline. And now what we have is the end of step two, the equivalent units that we're going to need as we move on on this problem. Okay, now let's read the second requirement, which says calculate the cost per equivalent unit for transferred in cost, direct materials, and conversion costs. Okay, we're done with step one and step two, so let me slide and we'll work on step three. And uh, once again, I've staged this. I've put in the, uh, the titles just to save time on typing. Okay, well, under step, and this is step three, um, it will actually work step three, four, and five. I think what I'll do is just label it off to the side here. Okay, so work in process beginning is the first item we have to calculate, and that represents step three. So I'll put that right here. Now, a lot of this information was provided above. Um, we have the total cost of 50,000 50, transferred in and 20,000 in beginning, so we have 70,000 in total, right? and transferred in was equal to, let me slide up and just reference it, 50. Direct materials was zero since it gets added at the end. And 20,000 was the conversion cost, okay? Let me slide that over. Um, then we need to continue on with step three we need to come up with the costs that were added in the current period. Okay. And what we're getting is 95, 25, and 20 for transferred in um, direct material in conversion. So we would reference those numbers and jot that down in our schedule. So I'll just copy that going across. Okay, uh, we'll sum the total here. In fact, I'm going to copy that formula there, so just for consistency, so that this one is also a sum from the totals, just like this one is. Okay, so now we've got um, 95, 25, and oh, I think this is 52,000. Um, cost added during the current period. Yeah, this is a typo. Um, this was supposed to be 52,000 is the, is the starting point of this problem. Okay, so once I change that, then we get that 52,000 there, and the total production cost 
uh, are equal to a hundred and seventy two thousand okay I think the screen moved a little bit for you but uh, we should be back at it here alright so what we then compute are the costs incurred to date and uh, all this really means is we need to sum these three items and so now we've got the sum of the cost incurred to date for the three categories transferred in cost direct material or conversion and then the next step is to divide by the appropriate physical equivalent units okay so if I come over here and then I divide by the equivalent units I will take the hundred and forty five thousand um, divided by the equivalent units we calculated in step two so we get 103571 and why don't I do this why don't I just put an underline here and then I can copy this across we get 250 and 553 and those are uh, the correct amounts and that is what we need um, to derive step four so that really is our step four actually I think we should consider step four to be the, di the division of the equivalent as well as coming up with um, an item called total costs to account for okay so, and the total cost was what we had in beginning plus what we added so I'm going to put a summation here and uh, I'll put an underline up here even though it's not right next to it um, actually I probably should put it here we'll just do it a line like that and a double underline so it won't be real clean but uh, you, you get the idea or actually why don't I put a zero in take this off put a zero in and then if I underline it if we set that as an accounting type we'll get the underline going across so still not perfect but uh, uh, close enough and I don't want to spend more time on on the Excel portion that's that's not the main point point. and let's relabel this step four okay step three is the calculation the completion of the equivalent units step four would be the total cost to account for okay and then our last step that we need to do is uh, just to assign the costs so we'll jot down here and I'll drop in assignment of costs okay and we have two categories we have to assign cost to the completed um, and transferred in or excuse me completed and transferred out costs and the, those were the 100 units right so I'm pulling from right here okay so that was the hundred units that that were completed and transferred out during the current period and let me indent that a little bit and then the other area would be the assignment of cost to what we had left in work in process and that's 40 units okay that should make sense to you coming right from there so we're gonna count for both of those units um, and and now we're going to assign the cost well how do we do that here's what we do we take the 100 units that apply times the equivalent units um, and I'm you know it might be best if I just fill in this schedule and then we add it so even though you really you really don't need the columns over here but I think it'll make sense so we take the 100 units completed and transferred times that cost right there the equivalent unit cost and then we add to that the same items here which would be 100 units times the 250 direct material and the 100 units times the 553 with work in process ending we use the exact same approach um, so I'm going to take 
the 40 units times the equivalent units that we calculated. And then the, then the, um, the zero units, since there's no equivalent units for direct material and in ending inventory, and that's because the direct material gets added at the end, so it hasn't been added. And then the conversion cost, of course, was prorated. But if we copy that over, we'll get that 30 equivalent units times the appropriate cost. And then if I sum from these two, and let me, let me just improve the format here. Um, at this point, we don't need dollar signs on the second one, right? And we'll take the pennies away. Uh, actually, that one's fine as it is. I just want the pennies to go away. We don't need that. And we can copy that cell, which would be um, the summation. And what we see is we've also come up with the total cost to account for as part of step 5. So this last part is step 5, and really that's the end of our problem. Okay, underline this. And um, if we slide back up, we've now accounted for the cost to the, the various points that we needed to. So we summarize the total cost to account for and assign total cost to the units completed and units to ending work and process. And that's that last step right there. And that takes care of this problem, everyone. Thank you.